Welcome back to our Catechism Review. Today we're going to do the first petition of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, the petitions just means the, the things that you're requesting uh, in the prayer. So there's the introduction, our Father who art in heaven, and then the first thing that we ask in the prayer is, Hallowed be thy name. Uh, so this is on page 242 of your Catechism, and it just goes through page 245. And I encourage you to, to read through the, the Bible verses there and also to work on the memory work that's in the box on page 242. What does this mean? God's name is holy, certainly holy in itself, but we pray in this petition that it may be kept holy among us also. Uh, and then this, how is God's name kept holy? That's what we're going to talk about today. So just be working on that memory work. Couple of things. Remember, we're doing, you know, Hollywood be thy name. Thy just means your name. And Hollywood is a strange word. Um, it means kept holy or made holy, sanctified. Um, we know it mostly because uh, it sounds like Halloween. Uh, All Saints Day is November 1st. The saints are the holy ones, the hallowed people. Um, and Halloween is October 31st, All Hallows' Eve, and then in the old way of saying it, that came to be called Halloween, um, the eve of All Saints' Day or All Hallows' Day. Um, so it's kind of, it, it's a strange, you know, word that we don't use very often, and that makes it confusing for some people. But if we read this, God's name is kept holy when the word of God is taught in his truth and purity, and we as children of God also lead holy lives according to, to it. Help us to do this, dear Father in heaven. But anyone who teaches or lives contrary to God's word profanes the name of God among us. Protect us from this heavenly Father. So really what we're asking is, um, we're asking God, help us to keep your name holy. Um, May your name be kept holy uh, by us or among us. Um, that's what we're asking in the Lord's Prayer. Um, so uh, the first thing that we, we realize is that um, God's name is among us. So today um, I'm wearing a, a, a Valpo sweatshirt. I went, I went to Valpo. Um, well, if I went and let's say I went and robbed a bank, wearing this sweatshirt, the people at Valpo would be embarrassed by that because I'm, I've got their name on my shirt. Um, and if I'm out committing crimes, that drags the name of Valpo through the mud. Um, so we have to think of it as God has put his name on us. He's claimed us. He's adopted us into his family. And so and we'll talk more about that in, when we talk about baptism, but God has put his name on his people. Um, but how do we live up to that? You know, when people walk around with a St. Paul's shirt on and we maybe go to an away game in basketball, the reputation of St. Paul's goes with those kids. And if they are well-behaved, that uh, makes St. Paul's proud. And if they are behave poorly, that is humiliating to St. Paul's. Well, imagine how great it is to think about when you say, God himself has put his name on you. You bear the name Christian, uh, child of God. Um, so how can we take the holy name of God, which we read in the box right here, it's holy anyway. I mean, God's name is holy without our, our help. Um, but we're praying that when he puts his name on us, that we're not the ones who drag it through the mud, uh, that uh, we keep God's name holy. So God's name is kept holy when the word of God is taught in its truth and purity. So that would be what goes on in church or confirmation class or a Bible study when uh, our faith in Christ, we are, we are pointed uh, to Christ in the scriptures truthfully, uh, and without any kind of falsehood intermixed with it. And we, as children of God, as people who have God's name on us, who are known in the world as the followers of this particular God, as children of God, also lead holy lives according to the word of God. So 
Uh, when we did the Ten Commandments, you know, it says we should fear and love God so that we do this. And when you're doing that, you are keeping God's name holy. And so that we don't do that. And when you're doing that, you're dragging God's name through the mud. Um, so the prayer is, help us to do this, dear Father in heaven. Help us to believe your word and live holy lives according to it. Help the word of God to be taught in its truth and purity in our midst. Here at St. Paul's, uh, in our community, we want the truth of God taught in its truth and purity, and we want to lead holy lives according to that teaching. Um, and then that helps God's name to be kept holy among us. But anyone who teaches, so if I get up here and I start teaching you all kinds of things that are wrong or that are false or that aren't really in the Bible, um, or if your Sunday school teachers would do that, or if the teachers in the school would do that, or your parents, or really anybody who teaches false things as though they are true and says, you know, this is what the Bible says when the Bible doesn't say that. Anyone who teaches or lives, meaning, you know, that our, we, we live as though sin isn't sin, as though we can do whatever we want, contrary to God's word. Anyone who teaches contrary to God's word or lives contrary to God's word profanes the name of God among us, meaning drags it through the mud, makes, makes it something bad or common or, you know, tramples it underfoot. So protect us from this Heavenly Father. When we say, hallowed be thy name, that's what we're really asking. If you remember, if you go to St. Paul's uh, and you're in eighth grade, you remember that this was the lesson that we made those big, crazy, neon-colored hats uh, and with the big word Christian in your name and said, I keep God's name holy when I X, Y, and Z. I drag God's name through the mud when I do X, Y, and Z. Um, the main thing to remember is that it's the name of God is among us. You bear the name of God. Your community bears the name of God. And people have a right to look at you and say, that's how Christians act. Listen to your words and say, that's how Christians talk. That's what Christians do. That's a huge responsibility. That is um, really uh, more responsibility than any of us can possibly live up, live up to, to have God himself say, okay, this is what a child of God is, and invite the whole world to look at it and say, learn about what kind of God we have. Learn about the, the grace and the mercy and the love of God, his purity, his righteousness, Learn about that God through this person. Well, if you think you can live up to that on your own without God's help, then you don't really need this petition. But I think we all agree that we struggle um, to be the people God has called us to be. And so we desperately need his help to say, God, you have put your name upon us um, you know, here at St. Paul's in the Christian community, wherever you are around the world. You've put your name upon me in holy baptism, we invited everybody to say, here's the children of God, a child of God, and I need your help to live up to that. I want my life to be holy, my faith to be in Christ, in the truth. Um, I don't want to be misled by false teaching. I don't want to wander and live in sin, but I know that's what happens. Um, so we pray, hallowed be thy name, May your name be kept holy among us with pure teaching and righteous living. That's what we're asking for God's help for. And we will continue with the second uh, petition tomorrow.